Sports Showcase, you'll see stars on ice. The World Figure Skating Tour of Champions, featuring the artistry and style of reigning world champion, American Jill Trenery. Will she turn pro or go for the gold in 92? Also, the flamboyant, unpredictable Christopher Bowman, one of the most dynamic free skaters in the world. And Japan's Midori Ito, the 1989 world champion and this year's silver medalist. Her athletic skill was a highlight as a relative unknown at the Calgary Olympics. Plus, elegance of this year's ice dancing world champions Marina Klimova and Sergei Ponomarenko. And men's Olympic and world medalist Viktor Petrenko. Plus, many more of the best in the world. All today on Saturday's Sports Showcase. by the top amateur skaters in the world. After the pressure of the world championships in March in Halifax, Nova Scotia, these champions embarked on a rigorous 25-city tour. Their job, to have fun, fun on ice, performing without the pressures of judges and scoring, instead playing to the crowds across North America. Today, we'll look at their performances at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. And joining me is Sandra Besick, the choreographer of Brian Boitano's gold medal-winning performance in Calgary. And Herself, a five-time Canadian Paris champion a bit of a time ago with your brother, <laughs> Val. Years ago. <laughs> Give us some uh, feeling about the difference now, going from competition at a world level to now this exhibition tour. Well, the difference, as you said, is the judges have gone home, which means that the new measure of success is applause. And so I think there's still a degree of competition, friendly competition amongst the skaters as they vie for audience approval. And I think the most obvious difference would be the choice of music. Here you're more likely to hear, say, the top 40 instead of Swan Lake. But basically, uh, the scoring is, uh, well, the fans at home can do it as they did at Landover. If they feel like applauding, you know, that's, uh, that's a top score. Now we're at the midway point between uh, Calgary and Albertville, France in 92 in the Olympic Games. We uh, have said goodbye to the champions of 1988, Katerina Vitt and Brian Boitano, are now pros. In fact, they're skating tonight in a show here in New York City. Uh, who are the men and women we should watch for the next Olympic go-round? Well, certainly Jill Trenery, who is the newly crowned world champion, as well as Midori Ito, the Japanese uh, world champion from last year. And then there's Klimova and Ponomarenko, the Soviet ice dancers who are reigning world champions, uh, Christopher Bowman, the showman, and um, Isabel Brassur and, and Lloyd Eisler from Canada, the, the pair team that stole the silver medal. Yes, they really were a surprise in Halifax, and in fact, uh, you're going to enjoy seeing them in two performances this afternoon. The first performer will be seeing the 1990 Ladies World Champion Jill Trenery of the United States. She's 21 from Minnetonka, Minnesota, the first American woman to win the world title since Debbie Thomas in 1986. The talented Trenery won the worlds on the strengths of her school figures, a phase of the competition which will no longer be used. From now on, the skaters will be judged on their short and long free skating programs. For Trenery, the dropping of the school figures will make it all the more difficult for her to defend the title next year in Munich. At the time of this exhibition, the three-time national champion had still not decided if she would skate in next year's worlds or turn professional as the reigning world champion. The funny thing is, I honest to God do not know what I'm going to do. And one day I'll wake up and think, no way. No way. This is it. There, I, there's, there's no way I can go on. So the next day I think, there's, there's no way that I could not, could pass up an opportunity like the Olympics in 92. Regardless if I win or come second, third, the fact that I could be a top contender. I mean, how many people have the opportunity in a lifetime to go to the Olympics, much less go to the Olympics and be one of the top? So <laughs> that's where I stand right now. Sounds as if she's made up her mind. 92 Olympics in her plans. Jill Trenery before a crowd of 15,000. Capital Center, Landover, Maryland. Three-time U.S. champion Trenery. She's now 21. Captured her first world title in Halifax. Blend of uh, rock and roll and swing music of the 40s. For Trenery.
this is a new experience for most of these skaters in that this is one of 25 performances and it's so difficult to keep technically exact all the time. But what's important here is working with the crowd and Jill's doing this beautifully. Putting this crowd in the mood, world champion Jill Trenary. Her coach, the famed Paolo Fossi, now includes Jill in his ladies' big three with former Olympic champions Dorothy Hamill and Peggy Fleming. And here is the 99-pound dynamo. She's 20 years old now, Midori Ito, athletically superior and the one to beat in Alberville with her tribute to or native Japan. Not only is Midori technically the strongest lady out there, but she could match any of the top men. You've just got to marvel at these jumps. That was a triple-triple combination. And Ido was the first woman ever to perform a triple jump following a triple jump. And how old was she then? She was 12. doesn't have to worry about the school figures. Does she have a weakness? Well, being only four foot eight inches tall, she has a difficult time developing any kind of line or grace that's normally associated with figure skating. performance non pharrell offering some early evidence as to why she is the favorite for the gold in 92. Ito, the greatest jumper in the world and uh, in a league all by herself, and the only reason she didn't win the world championships in uh, Halifax was her weakness in the comp compulsory figures. They've been thrown out. How's anyone going to beat her uh, in 92? Well, I think the question is, will the strength of jumps determine results alone? I, I sure hope artistry isn't lost. And land over Maryland. We've seen the top two women, the USA's Jill Trenary and Japan's Midori Ito. Now it's time for the men, Christopher Bowman and Victor Petrenko of the Soviet Union. The USA's Christopher Bowman won a bronze at the Worlds. He's definitely Bowman the showman. Uh, Sandra, can he uh, focus himself? Can he concentrate enough to really elevate himself to world champion? I think only Christopher can answer that question, and he's extremely talented. But he's also competing against other gifted athletes. Petrenko, Browning, to name just two. So I think the question is, applying this talent, that's what's going to separate the men from the boys. All right, Kurt Browning from Canada was the number one man at the Worlds at Halifax, Nova Scotia. We asked Christopher Bowman, what would it take?
to make Showman Bowman more of a competitor in the amateur arena. It's been a difficult change for me because I've never been someone that's been interested in beating this person or getting this medal. I've always just wanted to do the very best I could do and, you know, be happy with that. As long as I've done that, I will always be happy. But the fact remains that if I really want to accomplish the things that I have dreamt of for 17 years, then I'm just going to take that extra little bit of effort and adjustment. Christopher with seventh in Calgary says he wants to skate and skate seriously through the 94 Olympic Games in Lillehammer, playing to the crowd as he skates to Frank Sinatra. Never one to shy away from the camera. He's the kind of guy your mother always That's warned you about. <laughs> That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April, shot down in May. But I know I'm gonna change that tune. When I'm back on top, back on top in June. Well, that reminds us that Brian Boitano, Bowman's countryman, really made it tough on all the skaters in these exhibitions last year when he didn't hold back a thing. That's right. Brian set a high technical standard for these exhibitions, and I think the rest of the skaters have taken his lead. Christopher Bowman from Van Nuys, California. This is the Triple Lux, and it's to his credit that he's even attempting this, but it's just slightly under rotation, and he wasn't able to hold it. And now skating the queen. And now skating the queen. Here's Victor Petrenko, second in front of Bowman in Halifax. The young Soviet, he's just 20. The new European champion. Victor has his own sex appeal, but he does it with elegance and sophistication. Like Bowman, uh, Victor was a former world junior champion. He won in 84. And his younger brother, Vladimir, the 1986 world junior champion. So skating in the family.
Victor was only 18 when he won the bronze in Calgary. This young skater is a definite force as we look ahead at the 92 games. Welcome back. We've seen the top amateur ladies and men skaters in the world. Now, we'll see the men and women working together with the artistic beauty and grace of ice dancing. And the couple you're about to see are the two-time world and European champions, Marina Klimova and Sergei Ponomarenko of the Soviet Union. Um, do you like to dance? I sure do. <laughs> How about ice dancing itself? Did you ever try it? Yes, I did. What I did not, comp not competitively. Uh, it seems to be the easiest of the four, the singles and the pairs, uh, but it... Uh... It looks easy because it's not perceived as being athletic, but it's very difficult working with another body so closely. What makes this Soviet pair the best in the world? Soviets have a very strong ice dance tradition, and uh, this particular couple has great style with a, a balletic approach and something I'm a sucker for, romance. Patience is a virtue. It's learned by Klimova and Panamarenko. They waited patiently behind the Soviet pair of Bestimianova and Bukin, the former world and Olympic champions. They finished second behind their countrymen in Calgary. Now it's their time. Marina Klimova, Sergei Panamarenko, world champions, 1989 and again in 1990. Not only are they meticulous, but their work isn't just a showcase of technique. It casts a spell. formula on the ice or in the ballroom, isn't it? The winning dance teams are two as one. Absolutely. Just watch how their bodies work together. Their unison. Every, every little detail is worked out so precisely. Forget that dance is less spectacular than pairs where you have throws and overhead lifts and more athletic moves. I can see why you're such a big fan. Tightness with the body and the unison. 
And now Maya and now Maya Usova and Alexander Julin, also husband and wife, second in the world last year, third this year in Halifax. Some feel they're even more talented than Klimova and Panamarenko. They share the same coach as Klimova and Panamarenko, and I think it's a real credit to Natalia Dubova having two of the top three teams in the world. strength of the Soviet skater Sandra and is it me or does Maya look as if she just stepped out of the Bolshoi? Absolutely all the dance teams as well as all the other skaters have um, very serious ballet training. That look, that line. Terrific choreography. Maya Usova and Alexander Zulin of the Soviet Union. Next, and Alexander Zulin of the Soviet Union. Next to the pairs and a terrific new team from Canada, Rasur and Eisler. Welcome back to Saturday Sports Showcase from the beauty and grace of ice dancing. We now pick up the pace with pair skating, where the women are showcased with a mixture of lifts and throws and spins. And uh, this is really... Uh, Oh, these are the stars of the various professional shows. People, I think, really enjoy the pairs skating, and it reminds us of some of the great names of Protopopoffs and Ty and Randy from the U.S. You worked with in Canada, the champions there, Barbara Underhill and Paul Martini, who won the World Professional Championships. Um, what is that new rule that says that you can make money and still compete in the world and the Olympic Games going to do to this part of the sport? Well, I think it will help the Western pairs, certainly, because... It gives us the luxury of time now. The kids don't have to turn pro to earn their living. They can, they can develop their skills and stay amateur. And for people like Isabel Brasseur and, and Lloyd Eisler, it, it opens up the door. They could stick around for years. Well, that's that surprising new Canadian pair. And we found out from Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler how they became a skating combination. And apparently it almost didn't happen. When they talked to Isabel, Isabel said, no, I don't want to skate with them because back then Isabel was just a little smaller and I'd had to have a reputation that the throws were being very, very high and that I was a big person and that she didn't want to skate with me. She'd be too scared. So her coaches convinced her to just at least try it for one, one day. No kidding. Just one day. She was crying in I practice. was crying on the phone and I, I hang up and I go to my dad and, Dad, I don't want to skate with him. I'm going to finish in the wheelchair. I don't want to. I don't want to. And finally my coach said, oh, just once. You won't. You won't skate with him. We promise, we promise, but just try it once. So I went, okay. And then finally after an hour, I went, well, that's it. I don't want to skate with anybody else now. <laughs> well, continued at Landover's Capital Center with Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler. And in this encore, the Canadian pair demonstrated their strength, the overhead lift, and they saved a spectacular one-handed Detroiter for the finish. I'm impressed. <laughs> At least that's what they call it over in Windsor, Ontario.
played together for three years, already the world silver medalist. Definitely a contender for, for the Olympics. And the Canadians have not won a pair's medal since 1964. to skate with Lloyd in the first place, and quite frankly, I don't blame her. Legitimate threats to the Soviet stranglehold on the Olympic pair's gold medal. Next, and now the young pair from Leningrad, Natalia Mishkuchanik and Arthur Dmitriev. Like Isabel Brasur, she's 19, he's just 22. A very talented team. The bronze medalist in the world this year. They're also a very creative team, and this particular piece has been choreographed as an exercise for all their spins. And the spins really take both members of this pair into different and unusual positions. Fun to the very end, and you'll see more on their skate off. Their coach, Tamara Mustina, says this young pair from Leningrad will win the Olympic gold in 92. She must know what she's talking about. Her last team was the 84 Olympic champion, Balavan Vasilia. And we'll be back. I hope you're enjoying this exhibition of the top skaters in the world on our Saturday Sports Showcase, that wonderful combination of athlete and artistry and figure skating. And we continue on with Sandra Bezik, the woman who created Brian Boitano's gold medal program in the Calgary Olympics. Now it's time for the U.S. Pairs champions. That's Christy Yamaguchi and Rudy Galindo. They finished fifth in the world. But uh, they are not going to continue. Uh, Christy has decided not to double up. She's going to concentrate on her single skating. 
and uh, in a way that's kind of sad we won't see them again and their final performance here is a is a lovely one and the americans aren't strong at all in pairs with with their departure it's going to take a few years for the united states to build up their pair skating but there is exciting news irena rodnina three-time olympic champion has agreed to teach in california and she has so much to offer and and that should be very exciting for the young skaters Christy and Rudy, well, we wish them well. They've given us lots of pleasure. And to Andrew Lloyd Webber's Starlight Express, a musical performed completely on roller skates on stage and transposed here in Landover to the ice by Christy and Rudy. A delightful program. U.S. champions the last two years, and they finished fifth in the world, both in 89 and again here in 90. Christy Yamaguchi is the youngest of these national and world champions. She's only 18, so her future is all ahead. Giving up pair skating as a future Olympic hopeful. Do you think the pairs will help her in her single skating? Well, I'm sure it was a very difficult decision for her to make. And in the past, the pair was a help to her in that it, I think, perhaps took the pressure off her single skating. But I think she's taken both disciplines to as far as she can without full-time commitment, now it's time for her to make the decision. Her fluidity has always caught my eye. She has a wonderful delicacy about her, but don't let that mislead you because she's technically quite a powerhouse. You'll see that later in her solo performance. breaking up. They've grown together as kids in San Jose, California. Rudy lived with the Yamaguchi family for a year. What happens to him now? I believe he plans to resume his single skating as well. Now it's more emotional than it was in Landover at the time of the performance because this is the last time Yamaguchi and Galindo performing as a pair at the Capitol Center. The 
Vancouver, Maryland, the World Figure Skating Tour of Champions. This is the 21-year-old surprise of the 1990s from Bountiful, Utah, Holly Cook. She won the bronze in Halifax. What a year Holly had. First, she came third at Nationals, making the team, which was a shot. Then, she walked away with the bronze medal at World. And by this performance, you can see that she's really thriving on this success. Now right to her final bow, high energy, Holly Cook. level, did she have some advantage in being relatively unknown? Oh, without a question. Being unknown, she had no pressure, so she was able to walk in and do her best and see what happens, and, and it ended up with a bronze. continue to be bright, even golden. Oh my, just about the time you think, well, where is the talent going to come from in the next generation? Uh, all of a sudden, here's a Holly Cook, and later we're going to see a Todd Eldridge, two basic unknowns who are most impressive at Halifax. That's right, and what's especially exciting is that they are the tip of the iceberg. There's a wealth of talent in this country. Now, Eldridge, we're about to see his performance. Uh, as good a debut as a man in America has ever made on the, on the world level. And as I watched you uh, in your keen eye, you seem to feel that this fellow really has uh, gold medal potential. I am excited by his talent. He's uh, young. He has a solid head on his shoulders. He's got great technique. He's, he, everything is wide open for him. And he's only 18. Todd Eldridge. He surprised many around the world, but he didn't surprise himself. I think this year I was maybe a little bit ahead of schedule, um, but now that I see what the other guys, the other competition looks like, um, I think that I, it's not really out of the realm of possibility that, you know, in the upcoming years I can, you know, open a few more eyes and uh, make myself known. And Todd, El and Todd Eldridge at 18 has opened some eyes like a major storm from junior world champion just two years ago to fifth in the world this year. The U.S. national champion from San Diego, California. Good afternoon. Appropriate number for a young skater, John Lennon's Imagine. Oh, there's a lot of that going on. As these young skaters look ahead to 92. trouble coming out of that triple. Is he a good jumper? Yes, he is. He's a real bright star of tomorrow. A diamond in the rough. He has a solid base. It's only going to get better. Gorgeous triple loop.
Coming up is the triple axel, the only one that we'll see in this show. Now that was an excellent jump. A little lack of concentration on the landing, but one thing... That Good Two full years, that's a lot of growth time for a man like Eldridge. It'll be exciting to watch. The next boy, Tano, that will be Todd Eldridge, a student at Miramar College in San Diego, California. Now, this performance by Paul Wiley is of championship quality. Makes you wonder why this 25-year-old hasn't done more. Nine years ago, he was the U.S. junior champion, but never a champion at the senior level. Tenth in the world this year, but this Paul Wiley that you're watching of metal quality. He's a skater skater. His, his style is pure and clean and accomplished. It's just a frustration that he hasn't been able to be more consistent in competition. Exuding a rich, mature, high quality, and well appreciated Paul Wiley. They loved him in Landover, a student at Harvard. He then visited with his idol, a Harvard man, John Misha Petkovic.
Susan Paul, you have a terrific classical style. You're a great spinner. It was terrific to watch you. Oh, thanks very much. I'm just glad to be on tour. It's a lot of fun. We get out there, and I think for once we just shed all of our inhibitions that are out there when the judges are there. So it's fun a lot. Well, well listen, this year you were almost U.S. national champion after a great performance. A disappointing showing at Worlds. Are you going to be back next year into the fray of things? Absolutely. I think that uh, Nationals should have been there. And, uh, you know, I really felt like I had a, it's about one-tenth away from being there, you know, at the National Championship. And that taste just makes me want to go on and do more. And I know I could do a lot better than I did at Worlds for sure. And um, I just think that the World Judges are ready to see somebody who can put together the technical elements and also be an artist out there. No question, Wiley's talent is there. He'll be 27 in Albreville. Will it all be realized? And now, Chris, and now, Christy Yamaguchi, fourth in the world, second to Jill Trenary in the U.S. Nationals. Watch this triple lock. It's beautiful. Music from the television series The Beauty and the Beast. driven competitor two years ago she had stress fractures in both legs during the summer they had to fight to keep her off the ice got it all, the jump, the grace, but especially, I think, we can feel her love for this. Christy Yamaguchi, now her full concentration set on her solo skating. Get star, European champion, world silver medalist, Victor Petrenko. some unusual music, a Russian folk song, translated, A Drunk Man in the Alley. And Petrenko has some light-headed and uh, light-footed fun with it. Is working on a quadruple. Perhaps we'll see it at the World Championships in Munich next year. World champion Kurt Browning is the only one to land a quad to date successfully in competition.
<laughs> the lyrics here are kiss me. It's the only Russian I know. <laughs> Victor Petrenko, the Soviets have never had an Olympic gold medal winner in men's skating. Here's a serious contender. And uh, part of the story is he's from Odessa on the Black Sea in the Ukraine, a summer city. And here he is, a winter sport champion. Second in the world this year, Victor Petrenko. He took us down a fun walk with that drunk in the alley, didn't he? And then he went over to John Misha Petkovic. Victor, without figures next year in the championships, what is the single thing you're going to have to work hardest on in your free skating? Um, I think it could be better than it was before for skaters like me, Christopher, Kurt Browning, and uh, we could skate only free programs and uh, could try to do, try do some difficult jump like quadruple. I think it could be better. Well, it should be very interesting. Now, of course, consistency in landing the jumps every time is going to be key to winning the gold medal with only free skating. You have the artistry. Are you going to be work working particularly hard on your technical merit aspect of the uh, program? Yes, sure. Uh, I think it uh, must be together artistic and uh, technical uh, together, and um, I must uh, do it for win. Excellent. Well, good luck. Thank you. Next, Moscow students, world bronze medalists in dance, Maya Usova and Alexander Zulin. The romantic melody of autumn leaves. Maya Usova and Alexander Zulin. Terrific contrast to the lighthearted fun of Petrenko. And it's tough to clap when you're holding hands. And we'll have more from the best in the world. With the elimination of school figures in Olympic competition, here's the early favorite for the gold in 92. 20-year-old Midori Ito. She skates to On My Own from Les Miserables. 
The beauty of this music unfortunately magnifies what is considered Ito's weakness, um, a lack of sensitivity and, and maturity in her performance. My own Good afternoon, this is... World silver medalist Midori Ito. And don't well, for someone who didn't speak English until a couple of years ago, Isabel, a French Canadian, is really advanced. You know, fear does strengthen one in many interesting ways. And here she is with her partner of three years, Lloyd Eisler. And dreams do come true. No one even considered Isabel and Lloyd before the World Championships this year, but they skated the performance of their life and won the silver medal. He's 26 and 175 pounds. She's only 19 years old, weighs just 87 pounds. He's a foot taller. And their strength is their lift. Watch this triple quick. tremendously strong and throws her around like a feather and we'll see more of that in the encore performance later today. Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler of Canada. And this is their bounce spin. It's illegal in competition, but great fun for the audience here. And a move where you best had your dental insurance paid for. <laughs> <laughs> and now the young... Aren't they gorgeous? They are indeed. But we must remember that although they are the world champions, the Duchesnais from France, the co controversial and creative yes. couple, did win the free dance this year, which means next year in Munich the competition is going to be fierce. Yeah, the world championships next March in Munich. Well, don't wander away because we have the encore performances coming up. Himself with his Washington Capitals hockey jersey. And on this play, he shoots and he scores. From the Stones, often uh, considered outrageous in their own way, and Bowman, the uh, perfect typecasting. 
he's definitely the bad boy of skating, and I suppose every sport has to have one, but I'm sure his coach wishes it was someone else. fun watching Bowman and Bowman had fun with the crowd and tried to include one and of the thousands he could have picked he selected the one girl in the audience that didn't want to dance <laughs> I think she was pretty overwhelmed probably a Dino Cicerelli fan <laughs> gotta be lucky too for Christopher Bowman. For a sport so judged by impression, you have to give him credit for not caring what people think. <laughs> well, he may not bring back an Olympic medal from Alberville, but there's no question that as a pro, he can entertain a crowd. He can't miss. He's got the talent to bring back a medal. Yeah, there's the one he might have chosen for the dance earlier. Here's the double axle, an example of the talent we were talking about. But he's got to train, and he's got to take his future seriously. And he talked with Misha Petrovich. You know, after the 1989 World Championships, you saw the American flag in second place, and you said, this isn't going to happen again. And, uh, of course, it was in third place this year. What about next year? Is this uh, going to happen again? Next year, there's no telling what could happen. This year was very difficult. As you know, a former world champion is a Canadian, and the world championships being in Halifax, Nova Scotia, made it tremendously difficult on the Americans and all other competitors. Uh, next year, it'll be in Munich. It'll be a real neutral ground. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to work real hard and uh, keep shooting for that goal. you going to change anything in your training routine or in your approach to next year's competition in yeah. order to assure the goal? I'm going to be doing some different things with choreography and training and all sorts of new and different things. Uh, just make things a little bit more diverse as far as myself and my skating because there won't be the figures. I'll have more time to devote more of my energy to performing and perfecting all of my skills. Christopher Bowman, not his skills, but his conditioning problems with overweight. Skills, but his conditioning problems with overweight that will be the challenge. Now, here's world champion Jill Trenery, the final encore to Body Heat. Body, 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 body heat.
Jill's got true star quality. She's fresh, athletic, I think a perfect example of a beautiful woman. The miss from Minnetonka, Minnesota, Jill Trenary. Apparently aiming for Alberville in 92 and not the pro. She then visited with former U.S. Olympian Misha Petkovic. Of course. Well, that was a more relaxed, less intense, more theatrical, less conservative Jill Trenary from the competitive mm -hmm. Jill. What was the difference? Um, the difference is I think that I enjoy the music so much and it's so uplifting and I, I go out there knowing that the audience is going to like the music to begin with and try to do the triple jumps too which makes me feel good. Well the, the, the reaction from the crowd of course was tremendous. Does that turn your head towards thinking about turning professional? Well it's, it's positive in both ways. If I turn professional I'm sure that they would, would like me and maybe a different style of Jill Turnery. And if I stay amateur, this is giving me more confidence to do my triples. Well, are you tempted by the lure of another gold medal and possibly an Olympic gold medal? Obviously, yes. I mean, how many times can you say that in a lifetime you can go to the Olympics twice and the second time have a chance to win and maybe, or just medal? It's, it's, a, it's a tough decision, but I'm going to make the right one. Will, will the fact that figures are no longer a part of the competition influence your decision? Obviously, yes. I feel that uh, the figures very did help me, and... It's disappointing, but I, I feel that I can compete with the other girls in the freestyle alone. Great. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Well, the International... Great. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Well, the International Skating Union has made Jill's uh, problems uh, much easier because now, under the new sanctions, uh, she can earn money in exhibitions and sanctioned events and still be eligible for world and Olympic competition. So one has to expect that we are going to see Jill Trenary and Midori Ito going head-to-head -head again. Can she beat Ito? I think she can. We have to remember that technically she's no slouch. She's every bit as strong as many of the other girls, but she happens to be competing against Ito, who's a wonder woman. But Trenary has style. And on the men's side, Kurt Browning, the Canadian champion and the world champion who did not uh, uh, involve himself in these exhibitions, has to be the one to beat looking ahead. He is the one to beat. He's the, he really is a competitor. He knows how to pull it out when he's out there. But there are a number of other men who, who could steal it? One of those, uh, the sparkle in your eye, Todd Eldridge, who's only 18 mm -hmm. from the well, U.S. There's Todd, and there's Christopher, and there's um, uh, Filipowski, and, and Petrenko. It's exciting. So uh, another wave of great skating talent to enjoy in the years ahead. And we'll continue with more Saturday Sports Showcase right after this.